Hi, my name's Saul, and I'm Team Marlin's graphic designer, and welcome back to another video. This is the second episode in our series of how to brand yourself as an F1 in schools team, which is an introduction to anyone on the basics of graphic design. Last time we discussed colour theory, and what colours you can use for your project. Today we'll talk about typography, which can seem quite daunting. There are over half a million fonts in the world, and choosing which one to use can be difficult. In this video, I want to take you through the basic categories of typefaces, the fonts we use as a team, and how to use typography to make an impact. So first of all, categories of typefaces. First, serifs. These fonts are traditional and are used for formal events. The word serif is used to talk about the little curves and lines, which you can see at the bottom of Fs and the sides of Ss in text. Serifs are used for the text in novels, and you might see them on invites to special events, such as weddings. They are often used for the logos of expensive fashion brands because they want to show themselves to be elegant and luxurious. Whilst Book Antica and Times New Roman are very formal serifs, the typeface Cooper Black is friendly and gives off quite a homely and warm feeling. The next category is slab serifs. This is not entirely separate from serifs and is kind of a 1.5 on this list. The serifs in a slab serif typeface either become angular and bold, hence the name slab, or rounded like the font courier. These can work well for names and branding for tools and equipment for construction, as well as for signs for grill restaurants and things like that. It's quite hard to pin down what slab serifs can be used for as they're quite versatile. However, this also means that they aren't appropriate for certain uses, something which I'll talk about later. Next we have sans serifs. These are modern and clean fonts. The name comes from the French word sans, which means without, because these typefaces don't have any serifs. At long distances, they are often more legible. One of the first sans serifs was the font Futura, created by Paul Renner in 1927. It was ahead of its time, and it was geometric, simple, and went along with the Bauhaus movement of the time. Another famous sans serif is the font Johnston Sands, which was created by Edward Johnston and is the font used for the London Underground. It's really iconic, with diamond dots of the eyes and bold, round O's. Sans serifs are used for business, tech products and an array of different uses today. The last few categories are not that easy to pin down on one characteristic. Decorative fonts are fonts used for decorative purposes, as the name suggests. Some examples are Jokerman and Algerian, but there are many more. This category is the broadest out of all of them. Then we have script typefaces. These are supposed to mimic the looks of words written by hand with elaborate curls. These can be good for organic products and special events. These typefaces are best used in small chunks. Now we'll talk about the fonts we use as a team. For the thumbnails of our YouTube channel, we use the font North. It's powerful and clear, which can attract people's attention towards our videos. For our website, we use the sans serif Lato, which is really legible, especially where there's lots of text on our website. For our portfolio layout, we're using North, Abadi and Abadi Extra Light. I'll talk more about using variants of fonts in a little bit. So, what fonts should you use? Well, it depends. For an F1 team, sans serifs are probably your best bet, as they convey a sense of being modern and can hint at professionalism. Some people like to put lots of text in italics for portfolios and things like that to indicate motion of an F1 car. Whilst this can seem like a good idea, it can be quite illegible for paragraphs and is best used in moderation. When choosing fonts, think about what message they can convey, and whether that message is what you want or what you don't want, and change the font accordingly. For places where you use text, try to stick to three fonts as a maximum. Really try to think about simplicity and legibility. Try not to mix font types that much, as it can seem busy and cluttered if you do so. If you need more contrast, then try changing the thickness and size of different fonts. Ultimately, do what you think is appropriate for your project. Every font has a purpose, but there are some typefaces which are overused, cliché, and can make the project look quite amateurish. If you avoid these two fonts, you'll be fine. First, papyrus. This is quite illegible, and reading paragraphs of text in papyrus can be quite painful at times. Comic Sans is one of the most hated and overused fonts in the world. It has a purpose, for things trying to seem friendly. It originated to stand alongside a programme which helped people learn to use Microsoft software as a replacement to Times New Roman. 
It has since been used in places which aren't appropriate for the font to be used for, so avoiding it is your best bet. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new. I hope you have an amazing week.